Hello and welcome back to Strange Glow Video. My name is Justin. Tonight I have our great friend Jerry joining us. Jerry, you may recognize from uh, the Ghostbusters Afterlife premiere event stuff we did. So Jerry is a great friend of the show, an excellent uh, friend overall, and obviously a huge Mario fan. So we had yeah. to bring the man that took me to the Mario or the Nintendo store in New York. He had to join the show. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, we did do that. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Well, thanks. Next here too. Next here too. <laughs> Next here too. Uh, Alec is still in the process of moving. I spent um, some time this afternoon helping him move into his new place. He got He's in there. literally literally moving today. Actually, yes. So he yeah. moved out of his old place into a storage unit. Yeah. So it's been an ordeal for him, but. He will not be joining this. He hadn't had time to see the movie, so we brought Jerry on, who's probably more enthusiastic and better versed in Mario knowledge anyway. Yeah. I hope so. Shit. I don't know. We'll see. But, yeah, no, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, moving sucks. Sorry, Alec, if you're watching this, I don't envy you. <laughs> Painting yeah. the movie with the two verse six. But, yeah, how do you guys want to kick this off? What do you want? Well, let's, let's chat. So, overall, Nick and I rated this before we saw the movie. Just kind of pompously were like, hey, what are you rating this movie straight off of trailers? Uh, yeah, we rated, we, we rated the trailer, basically. Yeah, all the trailers. So, out of uh, 10 one-up mushrooms, how many one-up mushrooms did you give it? Nick, you said you were going to give it a 9. I said an 8. I gave and, the trailer uh, a 9. The trailer is a 9. I like yeah, the trailers more. I like the trailers more than the movie. I'll say. Okay. You like the trailers more than the movie? Yeah, the the trailers, you know, don't tell you everything, but it kind of led me to believe a few things. That I'm not saying I didn't like the movie. I'm just saying I might I might lose a point. I might give it an eight instead of a nine. You know. Okay, so if you're gonna rate it right now, how many one up mushroom lives would you give it out of ten? The whole movie. Um, I'd say I'd say an eight, but I think I'm a little a little bit biased just because I'm just, just love Mario so much and excited to have a a more accurate film to the video game. I can mm -hmm. I can see why you'd say that. Uh, what about you, Jerry? Oh, 10. 10 all the way, man. I I had a smile ear to ear the entire film, and we'll get into it. I'll save some more of my comments, but I'll save ten. Yeah, this is just flat up. No spoilers yet. Let me let me add something. I think I think your kids will think it's a ten. Like if you take your kids. Oh, absolutely. But but if you if you do if you do a movie if you do a movie critic critical thinking about it, you can start seeing some issues. But if you turn yeah. off your brain or, or you're a kid, I think you're just gonna love it. I mean, if you if you go yeah. in looking to have fun here, I give this nine out of ten, and I increased yeah, it off the trailers yeah, you're, gonna, you're gonna have fun yeah. and i i just saw it so maybe i'm still um you know wowed by it um i went to the seven o'clock showing tonight and took the girls so i just got out of it like two hours ago yeah i've had 48 hours to reflect so i've had a little longer uh i went yesterday i picked the boys up uh from school and we went straight to the movie theater and it was awesome even got this beautiful little popcorn bucket Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I'll give I give the popcorn bucket a ten out of ten. Hey, that's yeah. probably the best value popcorn bucket AMC has yeah. ever released because it was fifteen bucks for that large popcorn with the tin. Like a yeah, large popcorn alone is like ten bucks. Yeah, it's metal. It's it's. I didn't it's even know they were doing pretty, that. Pretty, oh, it's pretty good that. scale. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I heard some places have already sold out, so I'd go out there and try to grab one right away. Yeah, I didn't even know they were doing that. I'll have to try that. Um, I think there's also a Mario Cup. I saw someone um, with a Mario Cup of some kind. I, I went to B&B &B, um, by my house. So I don't yeah, know. If I they thought were there was supposed to be. B&B &B had a plastic bucket, but they said they didn't have any cups. But I heard from somebody that works at the local company that makes those cups, and they had some kind of marketing issues. So maybe there were supposed to be cups, and they didn't get made in time. I don't know what happened. Amazing. Yeah, some of that stuff can be difficult. Yeah, so this popcorn bucket, though, is pretty awesome, especially for that price. Yeah. Yeah. I'm jealous. I have to go yeah, you get, a large, you get a large popcorn with it, which is, like Justin said, priority 10 bucks. So, Love it. We got a lot of Mario stuff in this house because my, my boys love Mario. Like, it's oh, yeah. their jam. So, 
Um, and 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 I, I was a bad boy today, and I got all the Mario movie toys except for the Princess Peach because they didn't have it at that Target. Awesome. The, That's, I didn't know they, they had, had the types of movie, but. They have the, the, the sale right now. If you buy $100 of toys, you get $25 off. So I did that. Well, Wait, I mean, I didn't, I... Yeah, I didn't buy um, the little figures because they only had Mario and Peach anyway. And Mario and Peach, the little tiny one, comes with the yeah. castle playset anyway. So oh, I, nice. got, I, got the, I got the van and the castle and then all the big figures except for Peach. Oh, I don't have Bowser either because they didn't have Bowser. I got to find those two still. Nice walk. Well, I know there's a, a steel um, special edition steel book um, when they release it on Blu-ray. Um, yeah, I, I waited yeah. to buy that uh, just because I wanted to watch the movie first to make sure it's like worth it. And yeah, yeah when I got out of the I got out of the theater Wednesday and I saw a post about all the different pre-orders for it. I was like, they're already yeah. announcing all this and have the images and everything. Yeah, that's awesome though. I mean, I think they had a little like extra time from moving this movie out from December to really set things up right, but. Oh, this yeah. is the most fun I've had at the movie theater in a while, honestly. Um, yeah, I found but, myself you know, like laughing out loud, like just like like I was a kid. I was just like, I don't know. I was just like um, very. It was obviously very nostalgic um, for you know our age and just all the little details and Easter eggs. I mean, it just makes you want to go back and watch the movie like another two, three times just to pick up on stuff, pause the screen, you know that kind of thing. Absolutely. So there's a lot of Easter eggs, but if you're watching this now, we're going to jump into spoiler territory. So if you have well, not seen time, the movie. Yeah, don't 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 listen beyond now. Um, I, but I wanted to say that we went dressed up, too. So I was Raccoon Mario. We had a yeah. we had a Super Mario World Joe wearing the cape, you know, and then we had Luigi and Peach and uh, Daisy. Yeah, so I we, saw the pictures. Uh, so we, we uh, yeah, so we, we took pictures with kids and stuff, and gave away some toys beforehand. Yeah, that was cool. Um, my girls, uh, Isabella, she dressed up as uh, Rosalina, like from my birthday awesome. party. The girls wore the same outfits, and then uh, Genevieve wore, uh, you know, her Luigi girl yeah. outfit. So, so and the theater and, and was everybody packed. was dressing like a, we we're wearing shirts, and like it wasn't just us. I mean, everybody that was going to that movie. Had, yeah, like, there was a lot of people you know, wearing the shirts and stuff. Yeah. 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 So at, at Comic Con, I picked up Pete a uh, Mario Odyssey shirt because, like, that's his. He just loves that game. But I mean, he loves oh, all yeah. the Mario games. So he wore that. Um, I didn't wear my Mario Kart shirt. I thought about throwing it on, but I was like, eh, kids aren't going to care. But yeah, it was it was good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I, saw, yeah I, I wore this. I was saving. My kids got me a Mario socks. So awesome. I wore those to the theater. So yeah, we were all decked out, man. I loved it. We're, were your guys' theaters packed as well? Or? So yeah. I went to a, a 345 showing. Like It's probably the first. There's a 330 we probably could have made, but I didn't want to be in a rush. Mm -hmm. um, but we hit the 345, and yeah, I was surprised how many people had filled that out because when I bought tickets, there's only like three other tickets sold. Um, uh, but by the time it was there, it was pretty packed. Ours, ours yeah, was ours packed, was and it was, it was a good crowd. You know, it wasn't like annoying. No one was annoying. There was, yeah, there was a little kid behind me that was really enjoying it, you know, laughing at the right times. And so it was, oh, a, yeah. it was a good experience. You know, it was fun. I mean, that's just why I love going to the movies, though. I mean, you get that communal experience of enjoying the enjoying the story and seeing where it's going, even though like we're not familiar with it. You know, like we know well, it, but we don't know what's going to happen. So well, I don't always enjoy that because sometimes you get some annoying people, but. Yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was it was a good experience overall, especially for being so crowded. It was pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna jump into spoiler territory right now. So there's a lot of Easter eggs in this movie, and just got some other generalized notes, which is pretty interesting. I, I do want to yeah. talk about that because I heard I saw someone say there's a lot of fan service in the movie, and I'm like, I don't I don't I don't look at it that way because it's an adaption of the video game. So I think there's just stuff from the video games and right i mean there's these there's easter eggs like wreck it ralph reference i think there is and yeah some other stuff but well and like but, that one scene of i think there i need to re obviously rewatch it um but the, the the toad at the antique store in mushroom kingdom is like does it still work and he's like yeah you just gotta blow into it like mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't i didn't catch this what it was i'm guessing it was like a nes cartridge um, yeah 
And well, you know, that, you know, that's a little fan service, obviously, compared, but come on. Overall, like it was an adaptation, like Nick said, of the video game. So, like, how are you not going to put in mushrooms and donkey, you know, all the stuff that they did? I mean, come on. Yeah, they well, and they did a great job, right? And the trailer led me in a f- couple of directions that I was really happy they didn't actually they didn't play out just how I thought it was going to play out in the movie. Mm-hmm. So well, I, but I, I was mis- I was misled into thinking there'd be some Luigi's Mansion stuff because you know they show in the trailer when it goes into the castle and it's all dark and spooky. Well, it was a little nod to Luigi's Mansion. I feel right. like it was a, but, but, a spooky but but he spent most of the movie in a cage, you know. So I thought yeah. I thought we were gonna see I thought we were gonna see two separate adventures going on at once. Well, I think what we're gonna see is this this is gonna be a franchise now, right? Nintendo's into oh, yeah. uh, the movie marketing and the way they yeah. set this up, that was my main concern, Jerry, when I was well, talking to Nick beforehand, was them overdoing this movie to begin with, and it was surprisingly yeah, balanced. Yeah, yeah, like the Yoshis only have like a cameo. Yeah, so, and then at the um, end, you know, the so post yeah, yeah, scene. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So Yoshi obviously would be a a character in the next film. Right. But that's yeah. something that's something yeah. that they did refrain from doing, even though we got a lot of Donkey Kong as well. But which and then like because it was both balanced, I think, like uh, Justin said, because I mean, yeah, there was a nod to Yoshi, you know, you gotta see Yoshi, and then the the, the Super Mario Cape, you know, in their commercial. Um, yeah. little touches like that um, but they didn't cram like every little thing of the Mario universe into this to make it just way too um, you know fan service to, to that point earlier um, they, like for example like Rosalina she's not in this maybe she'll be in the right. next one um, but they had the Lumineer or Lum- whatever the star things are called the yeah. Luma yeah the, the Luma, Luma was like the most existential character in there that yeah. was the biggest that was like kind of what guy. That was like the adult humor, like talking to the adults in the crowd because it was just right. like suicidal and everything else. It's like yeah, so disappointed. I was very, I was very when it doesn't to burn. Let that in the movie. You, I thought they would squash like some of the dialogue that he's he's like sweet release, you know, and all this <laughs> stuff. About that. Yeah. I'm like holy shit, that's a little un, unlike Nintendo. Yeah, it's dark, yeah. but yeah, that Luma I thought was hilarious. Um, and then that post credit just... scene. That post credit scene I love because it gave me the vibe, like the way they get to the Mushroom Kingdom in this movie has just enough vibes for the old Mario movie, the 93 movie, like that I was like, okay, I like how you're going to give it a little bit of credit there without like outright referencing it too much. I thought right. that was kind of silly and fun. So they use right. a lot of. They use a lot of power ups in this movie, but they're still. Oh, there's so that, many. Yeah, I listed them all out. I haven't been used. And then, like, <laughs> Princess, Princess, and I think Donkey Kong are the only ones that use the Fire Flower. So none of yep. the Mario Brothers yeah. do. But, and they didn't have to either. But, um, and then right. one... but I mean, there's, there's still more to do in the future movies. Right. right. But, like, and a lot of, a lot of enemies aren't seen. That, so. And true. And then, um, but I thought that they did a good job in the set or like, or every time, like I'm, I'm like the whole movie, I'm like, okay, they haven't done Tanuki suit yet. They haven't done the Tanuki suit. I'm like, I, I want to see, I want a Mario three reference here. And that's like my favorite yeah. power up of all time, because maybe because I have so much nostalgia for that game when I was a kid and mm-hmm. sure, you know, they did it. And I was just like, big smile. I was like, yeah. Oh yeah. It. And then, yeah, so they- then other things too, like the music and like the little references of the music um, and the backgrounds on certain things and how like uh, certain scenes in the movie when they're running and doing all this stuff, um, they do like a side view, like you're playing a video game. Yes. And I thought that was very clever of them to incorporate that view as if you're watching a video game because it's you know, Mario. Well, I thought that was some of the most brilliant stuff in the movie was the fact that it felt like you were playing the game in some of the moments. And then it was like also like yeah. way bigger than anything the game's been as well. Yeah. So, 100%. I mean, you got you got the Mario Odyssey references with Bowser trying to marry Peach, right? And like the well, suit that he wears Toad's, there. I noticed on, because um, I was looking for these Easter eggs I was watching that like on Toad's backpack, he had like mm-hmm. a, a badge um, of the upside down pyramid from Mario Odyssey on there. Um, yeah and that was super clever and of course on their journey to go to jungle kingdom you know they go through the desert of mario kingdom and 
Yeah. Yes. The Odyssey. Toad. Game. Toad's also dressed like Captain Toad, pretty much, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's dressed yeah. like Captain Toad. And, yeah. And like even like at the beginning, whenever they're running um, to get to their first job. And that's when they do that first uh, point of view of like the side view, uh, like a video game. I don't know if you noticed, but like towards the end of that whole um, scene, he when he hits that flagpole and goes down the flagpole. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like a random, just like small flag, like right next to it was um, a castle, a burger joint, I think it was. Um, but it was, it was a white like, castle. It was like a, not, not a, yeah, not quite a white castle, but something, <laughs> castle burgers or something it said. No, I didn't, I didn't see that. Yeah, and I thought it was so clever. Like he hits a flagpole, and then right next to it is the castle from Mario One. Um, but it's made to look like just like a restaurant. But it, obviously, it's tying in a nod to to the Mario One uh, movie so, or game, excuse me. So, yeah, and then you know, just going down the Easter eggs and and stuff like that, right? The uh, whole dialogue bit about oh, this princess is in another castle, right? That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. that kind of stuff, and. Um, so Mario 64 is like that and Mario 3 are my two favorites of all time. And, uh, the, you know, Princess Peach's castle, when you get there, the, the window pane is that of Mario 64 game. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when you jump through the window pane and hit that slide, that secret slide. Um, yeah. And I thought that was super cool. And then like in the crowd and the Donkey Kong scene when they're fighting, uh, one of the, the Kongs was wearing like a 64 shirt. Um, yeah. And then they re- referenced Diddy Kong, and then the what's the the chick name, the blonde Kong, uh, Dizzy Kong, I can't remember. Dick, but, yeah, Dixie, Dixie, I think. Dixie. Right? Yeah, Dixie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, that was great too because the way they set this up, they could do a Donkey Kong movie that it's its own journey, like Diddy Kong story, yeah. like right. And then we don't see Bowser Jr. We don't see any of the Koopalings, right? So there's right. so many enemies out there that they could do. You're barely scratching the surface of what's because out there. They're saving them for later, and then and also it, you don't want to just cram every little thing in there just because it's Mario related. Like it was well balanced to your point earlier. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and I think that they could easily do a Luigi's Mansion movie, right? Because Luigi kind of took a backseat in this, but Luigi's the star in the Luigi's Mansion stuff. So I think yeah. that would make sense. And they did um, a nod to it. I felt like you know when he had the flashlight and all that stuff walking around. Mm-hmm. And that, being a castle and i thought that was really cool I, and i agree with nick like i thought it was going to be more like like kind of like a plot b or something of luigi trying you know doing yeah his thing. i knew they were going to be sub- my favorite. i was a little disappointed that he was you know in in a cage for you know a lot of the movie but yeah but oh, yeah. they did a good job right because if you think about it the only ghost we saw was king boo and uh, king bomb bomb at the wedding that was so the- fun and that was awesome to see them in there so Dude, when they when they came out like that uh for the for the wedding scene um i just started i'm still smiling i was like yeah that's king bob that's that is awesome because i was looking when they're in the peach's castle i was looking at the paintings to see if they any of them resembled the ones from 64 and mm-hmm. i didn't see it. but then um then king bob showed up to the wedding and king boo and i was like that is awesome yeah i mean i was really impressed with with some of that stuff because yeah they forced a lot of that in there but it was fun though like lots of movies do that and you're like oh that's so cringe but you're thinking like this is the first mario movie they've done since 93 it's the first truly animated and it really just was so much fun like all the even this the way they did the mini mushroom right you know that i think that was a great use of they did it to mario and then they did it again later to bowser at the end right i thought that was awesome the mini mushroom is something that hell i kind of forgot about it you know it's only been in like one or two games you know um i think the 3d isn't it is in it's it's in the it's in the new super mario brothers games i think yeah the new super mario brothers and that was originally on the wii u but they ported it to yeah it was in that one which is a great game by the way i love that game it's so much fun yeah it is um the cat suit was great you know you got the fire flower you got the ice flower the tanuki suit and the superstar And they yeah, still I, left I, so much stuff out there, right? You know, they left out um, the boot. You jump they left the out. <laughs> they left out the boot, the frog suit. There's just so many that they're still out there, right? So I think it's the pretty me- cool. The mega mushroom, where it gets yeah. really big. Yeah, that's true. And I thought it was funny that um, the comedy tied to it, where Mario hates mushrooms, and you know he hates. Yeah. He's, but he, he's forcing himself to eat them because you know for the power. 
Um, I thought that was funny that they did that. And then, um, and then I, I just didn't understand, I guess like, we don't know who his family members are besides his mom and dad, you know, Luigi and Mario's mom and dad, I guess their aunts or siblings. Yeah. I don't know if they're siblings, like older siblings I, or something. I was hoping that they were going to acknowledge from the, the first movie that their last name is also Mario. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mario, Mario, Luigi, Mario. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been good. Um, oh, and did you I, notice like in his room too, like the little, I don't know why this came from my head, but like he's playing obviously Nintendo. I think it was yep. what Kid Icarus. Uh, um, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on top of the TV, there's an R wing, you know, from Star Fox um, yes. sitting on it. And I was like, they even got Star Fox nodded like in here. So I was like, that's cool. Yeah. Um, it was punch out pizza at the end yeah, of the yeah. battle scenes. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah. There's some good other. I saw. I noticed it's punch out pizza from the beginning when they first had that scene in there because there's a picture of um, what's, what's the name of the character in Punch Out? Um, why am I blanking? Oh, the character you play as? Yeah, I always yeah, forget his name. Green box, yeah. boxing gloves. Um, he, there's a picture of him like framed on the wall, like by the arcade. In yeah, the arcade, was the jump man? You know, so. Isn't 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 the character voiced by uh, Martinette? in the pizza restaurant too yes charles oh, charles martin that's yeah okay i forgot that he was gonna do a little voice because he's because he's the one kind of talking more like mario yeah and, well, and, and i guess we and i guess we should reference that they acknowledge the the accent thing because they really do the the cliche or the stereotypical italian accent in their commercial and right. then after they watch the commercial they're like do you think we overdid the accent yeah yeah and, and i was so surprised when they because i was so about the voices, and I'll get to that in a second, but um, when the movie opened with that, you know, um, I was like, oh, they, they're doing it like the accents. That's what I wanted. And, you know, so they they did it for the fans, you know, to do that, I feel. And then they did a good, what good, it was a good uh, written, written, it was good how they wrote it into the script on, well, we can't do the entire movie in an Italian accent. How are we going to get around this? And yeah they did it through that commercial. And so now you kind of know like, Oh, okay. So it makes it easier to hear Chris I, Pratt as the, as Mario, which I, I figured they would acknowledge it. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I wasn't really distracted by it throughout the movie. I didn't think it oh, no, was just Chris Pratt. You know? And honestly, like my biggest worries and like um, things that I was going to think, man, I might not like this movie is just uh, Chris Pratt um, doing Mario and then um, Seth Rogen doing Donkey Kong. And yeah, I, I actually didn't mind Mario, like Chris Pratt at all. I thought he, he did well, to be honest. Like, and it wasn't just his, I thought he was going to be his normal voice, but he, well, did he, he does like the, the, the video game quotes pretty well too, where it sounds yeah. more like Mario. Yeah, exactly. Like mama me and all that. And then, um, and then the only one that I'm still kind of on the fence on is like how, why they chose Seth Rogen for Donkey Kong. Um, I don't know if that, fit that character very well, well especially the laugh you know seth rogan has a very distinct yeah and laugh. they always gotta get his laugh in there and, and it was good which I is kind of funny but yeah. i didn't I, expect I, donkey kong to be in so much i didn't expect donkey kong to be in so much of the movie no but yeah. i did like that because i mean donkey kong is mario's first appearance right i mean he didn't even have the name yeah. mario then so <laughs> the fact that they acknowledged that in the super mario bros movie i thought was really smart yeah, exactly. And then when they, they're, you know, doing the fighting and all of a sudden um, Kong throws a, a barrel down at Mario and for, for the preference of the first game. And I was just like, oh, oh yeah, that, yeah, I that just, was, I laughed. And that I smiled. Like the game, yeah. yeah, their little rivalry was pretty good. And they both like bonded over like not meeting their dad's expectations, which is a little <laughs> cliche, but it's kind of fun though. It's too, right? It's like, your, dad, your dad was right. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah the um i really like jack black as bowser um yeah. except his, his singing stuff was kind of like whatever i didn't really care about that one way or the other but i really liked how he did bowser he didn't sound like he's doing his normal voice now seth rogan just walks sounded like he walked in there and did all of his lines without like doing anything right like right. chris pratt i thought did good charlie day was not quite as high up in his you know, he's usually kind of got that high pitched voice where he can be really annoying, like on always. Yeah. Saturday. And he really toned it in and reined it in. He was more, he more reminded me of horrible bosses the way his voice delivery was in this. It wasn't so mm -hmm. yeah. pigeonholing himself. So I, I didn't mind him. 
Chris Pratt, I was pretty surprised that it worked as well as it did. I, I was honestly not distracted by it at the end of the movie. I was like, oh, I didn't I, hate that. Yeah, I, th- so. I think the one the one that fit best for me was was Peach. I thought like that that yeah. voice really fits the character. I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, she, she, you know she's a great actor. I mean, like, if you saw the uh, the meal, the movie that was streaming here recently, and all the stuff she's done, she was great. No, so. I didn't. Um, and then and then Toad, uh, the voice actor, who's the actor, um, the comedian, the guy that did Toad's voice. Um, I thought he did a good job. I can't think of yeah. his name right now. Yeah, I like Toad. Um, I was pretty I, overall pretty happy with that voice cast because when they first said Chris Ratt, I said. Um, I was really afraid he was going to do like the Emmett voice from the Lego movie, which don't get me wrong. I like the Lego movie a lot. Um, the first one at least is really fun, but I was like, Oh, is he just going to do this thing? And I was really surprised with, you know, they must've had a good voice director in there for him because I was surprised really that Mm -hmm. I didn't, didn't hate him. Keegan, Michael key is toad. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I hate Toad as far as a character. I've never liked that character. Um, and turn him off. Turn, I actually kind of like him a little bit. Turn Terry off. Turn Terry <laughs> off. <laughs> Toad is the worst. <laughs> yeah, he's what? terrible. He's terrible. Oh, wow. He just, was... yeah, just sucks. He just gets in the way. Just get out of here. Oh. Yeah. No, but, um, you know, Toad. Well, I think in the movie Toad did pretty good, and since they had the Captain Toad thing, which is basically they took his version from Mario Odyssey and the Captain Toad follow up, which is kind of in the same vein, right? Right. That was that worked out pretty well for me, especially with all the Toads they had. Well, Captain, wasn't int- Captain Captain Toad was an Odyssey. I haven't finished that game yet. I know he's in uh, Super Mario 3D World also. Yeah, so Captain Toad is kind of um, you haven't finished Odyssey. That's crazy. Came out like six, yeah. seven years ago. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, Pete. I think Pete's beat it three or four times, just playing through I, over and over again. I want to. I want to get the Captain Toad game too. I, I, I like those segments of uh, 3D World where you play. The yeah, Captain Code game is really good. I never bought bought it again when it came out on Switch because um, I was like, I already had the game on Wii U, and yeah. And the only thing that I was missing out on is the additional levels that they put into it from Odyssey. Yeah. Theme. And I was like, so I've been still, I was like, maybe if it goes on sale, I'll, I'll grab it then. But then I don't know, or maybe you guys know, do I have to repeat the entire game before I get to those Odyssey levels or can you just jump straight there? Do you- I honestly don't know. Pete's played that one. I haven't watched him play it as much because it's a lot shorter, smaller game in scale and scope yeah. than some of the other stuff. It's a fun puzzle game. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was really happy with this movie. Um, I can't wait to see what they do with it next. I mean, to me, it's just a blast. I mean, the fact that there's so much they haven't even explored. I mean, they could do a whole movie just on Mario Kart itself, which I thought was pretty cool. That yeah. that was the other Easter egg that I really liked was how they had to select their card and then they like, yes. paint in the yeah, cards. That, was, that like, was so fun. Yeah. I thought it was like because I was like, okay, how? Because you see the trailer, like he obviously he's in a Mario Kart, he's in a cart. So he's like, how, how do they get? into these cards and especially if it's made you know mario says on the thing um and then how they came up with it with the kongs making the and uh, you know when they get to the jungle right away like the guy's driving a um a cart so you just know that that's yeah. how they do things over in the jungle kingdom and then so it just made sense that they would have make them a cart for them and that, i thought they did that really well and as far as how they tied in the mario kart piece um and then whenever he like they took off or something all of a sudden his uh a paraglider came out mm-hmm. and i was like ah that was awesome i just it's just so many little things like that and like choosing your cart and like and, they, and it was still like in the same kind of um icons and uh that the, that's in the game you know the purple wheel oh yeah and then toad of course has like this big ass monster truck <laughs> which i thought <laughs> was really funny you know, that was awesome, though. Like, I thought they did a good job integrating the Mario Kart. Because, like I said, seeing the trailers, I was like, man, they're going to shoehorn everything in here. And then, Right. Yeah, exactly. They just, ah, Mario Kart's super popular. We got to figure out how to get it in here. And they just kind of, like, half-ass it or just throw it in there. But, no, like, the way they wrote it into the story was really good. Yeah, no, I think it all came out pretty nice. And I'm like, okay, what are they going to do next? I mean, I'm seriously, like, super excited about how they're, they're going to. Gonna... I'm excited to see when they release the numbers, like, how much they made. Um, yeah this week and the opening day 
And you know for sure they're going to be, obviously they left it open at the end, um, but they're going to be making multiple movies here. Well, and like I said, you can easily do a Luigi's Mansion movie and make Charlie Day the star because, right, he didn't have a lot of screen time here. You can easily do a Donkey Kong movie and have like Mario appear in there or something if you want and do the Diddy Kong story, right? There's so many good games out there that they could easily do. And then you, um, yeah, I mean, Mario Galaxy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and then you're you start looking at other franchises too because like they got the Nintendo branding on there, which makes my mind go like seeing the Ghost Core logo come up on screen. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know they're gonna have to do some sort of Legend of Zelda game movie you know, I because about that. Um, and I thought about this like I don't know if they ever would because Link never talks, right? But then you look at Mario and Mario says like maybe three, four real word words in his entire video game history you know he's yep. not either really right so um so i'm like well if they did it with mario i'm sure they can figure it out with link and do it right because i know there was like that cartoon years ago back in the 80s that bombed well you look at metroid you look at star fox there's all these movies that could potentially come out of like a nintendo universe right yeah so it's like you've got the rich story characters there and i think with this they proved that if you're going to do it animated you can kind of keep it true to the story there because you know, how many cringeworthy movie adaptations have we seen that are terrible, right? Yeah. You look at the Resident Evil movies, and I know people love those, but they're nothing like the games at all besides they slap yeah. some character names in there and some costumes. Beyond that, it's nothing. Right. Even the last Looks reboot like- of that or the TV series wasn't there, but I think we're in a good spot. What are you saying, Nick? Looks like it's it's uh, estimated to surpass $300 million tomorrow. It's already... Uh-huh. It was already at 195 million earlier today, global, worldwide, you know. But wow. It, yeah. Do we know how much it costs? Like how much did they put into the movie? What the budget was? Here I'll look. Just to see how much you know profit they've made. Just curious. Um it says oh, wait. But um it says a hundred million. Be- Hundred million ish there, so yeah, yeah and they're tripling their investment. Um, then um, I was just thinking of Luigi's Mansion. I mean, it'd be kind of cool if then all of a sudden they introduced Daisy for you know Luigi. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're always kind of tied together a little bit. Yeah. Uh, well, you yeah. look at Super. You look at the Super Mario Land games, right, for the Game Boy that are a little bit different. You know, you're like you're rescuing oh, man, Daisy man. in those. So Bring Mario and Waluigi into the movie. Well, I know. Well, look at the Got number of characters. Days, yeah. yeah, you have so many characters they haven't even touched on yet. And yet they did this first movie as a way to show you things. And I thought they did a good job of explaining everything, too. You know, sometimes it's really like bleh, when they try to explain stuff in a video game movie. But in this one, they're like, yeah, you can use the power ups. And she's like, I grew up here. I just know this. Oh, and then the babies. Yeah, the, the baby is like. The little oh, flashback yeah. to Baby Mario and Luigi. Like, I love that. That was so cool because it's like Super Mario World 2 is not nearly as popular as Super Mario World, but it's still a fun game. It still has that aspect right. of it. So, like, it's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was just, that was a big surprise for me because not, not, I was never thinking Baby Mario and Baby Luigi would make it. And even Baby Peach, um, you know, got into the movie. And mm-hmm. that, oh, yeah. that was really really cute how they did that and uh my girls loved it because those are like some of the favorite characters because they're babies um, yeah they love that stuff but um yeah i mean every little thing that they did they put a lot of care into it and not just shoehorning things in it to shoehorn stuff you know just to add it yeah there. for sure so i was looking at a few things so just as far as other easter eggs i noticed that uh, trying to think of what you hadn't shouted out yet so the one you didn't mention, so the card game for Mario 3, where you go select a card. I saw an was it on a building. Yeah, I was on a billboard on a building. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. I didn't know if that was, I didn't know it was from that. I, I thought at first it was just like a nod to the um, uh, Fuduku card to whatever. I forgot, you know, when Nintendo got that start, um, mm-hmm. they were a playing card company. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, that's why Pokemon is like one of the, you know, as popular as it was as a card game, because Nintendo had been around for like since the late 1800s, I want to say, and they started right. out doing, you know, physical games, card games and such. So mm-hmm. I was pretty stoked on that. And then visually, this movie was just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, 
Um, like I saw everything looks so amazing. Something I, I don't know where I saw it, but um, the illumination guys were just like, and maybe oh, I, I think uh, yeah, it was during their little um, Nintendo Direct about the movie, and mm-hmm. I remember the guy saying how out of all the movies they've done, which they do a lot of good you know movies, they put the most like effort into this one with the lighting and every little tiny detail. I mean the mustache and like the Mario's hat and Luigi's hat looked just super real. The fabric in it and mm-hmm. um, so much TLC went into the the animation of this and the color and the lighting and all that. The textures and everything else. And then textures. I think I, I saw yesterday that um, Nintendo tease like, you know, they're already working on the next main Mario game entry. They didn't say when it'll be, but I can't imagine like with this type of hype and stuff like that, that it's going to be too far out. So that's what I was thinking um, this whole time. I, well, not, since Odyssey came out, um, I think I was talking to you, Justin, about this or something that uh, I thought for sure they're going to do DLC for that movie or for that game, excuse me. Uh, mm-hmm. It just never did. And then now with the movie, um, I'm like, what a better opportunity to launch a new Mario game with the hype behind it, where uh, you're going to get so many more people investing into Mario after this that aren't maybe a traditional Nintendo fan that are going to go mm-hmm. buy it because their kids love the movie and they're and it's going to bring them back into the nintendo franchise maybe they grew out of you know things like that for those type of people but um, yeah well uh, nick and i talked about this a little bit but i think you've got the opportunity to do mario kart dlc based off this new movie right like give me a racetrack there that shows like the donkey kong land and some of the other stuff mario kart i love mario kart 8 but holy hell i've been playing that since wii u and i paid Mm -hmm. the original dlc i mean that that game is like eight years old or something at this point. Yeah, you, like, oh, you have all the new tracks, all the yeah. I mean, tracks. I get the new tracks, and I do. I, this last wave, um, I really enjoyed um, like the brand new track that they made specifically for this wave. It wasn't like a remade of a of a different yeah. track from the past. Um, and that one was pretty good. I do like that. Um, I just want a brand new Mario Kart game, do, different because the gimmick on this one is like the the zero gravity, right? um wheels which oh, is cool yeah, that they yeah. put this in the movie um so i'm just interested to see where they like what mario kart 9 would be like you know what they're gonna do with that yeah and i think you know i don't think we'll see a new one until the next console maybe just because they are doing the dlc but they could easily do dlc yeah. for odyssey i mean they could easily throw out another game i mean you've yeah, seen what Ma- mario maker can do i'm i'm excited to see what people do in mario maker to make like movie levels and stuff yeah like yeah, that's yeah, going to yeah. be something really cool to check out here soon too. So, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, in, in the Mario Maker, you know, uh, speaking of like little Easter eggs, I mean, I'm sure you guys noticed like the hard hat um, guy wearing like the uh, didn't look quite like you know Mario because it obviously it wasn't Mario, but um, they did a little nod to Mario Maker. It felt with the yeah. Easter egg guy and um, and then what else? It was uh, oh. Another thing I thought was cool, I don't know if you guys remember that level in uh, Mario 3, and maybe I'm overthinking this, but whenever Mario's trying to get to Peach's castle and he has to take all those tunnels and he's like, all those pipes, and he's like, oh, God. oh yeah. Um, it reminded me of was it like Mario 3. There's wasn't it like World, like World, wasn't there like World 7 or something? It had like a whole bunch of just pipes everywhere. Pipes everywhere, and you had to like pick the right pipe yeah. to get up to the top of the, the level, and that's what it reminded me of. And I don't know if yeah. that was your intention or not, but it was cool that that so, so random and like like a deep cut so to speak that they mm-hmm. did. Then yeah they had the, the, other... the they had the clear pipes from the 3d yeah, mold or whatever the clear ones were cool yeah yeah that was awesome so and there's so much stuff they left out of that that they could still do like right else elsewhere in the franchise i was just thinking like um you've got all those levels there and you've got a lot of the <laughs> so many of the villains that are great in there. Like we didn't see any like um, the swamps or, you know, like, yeah. there's so many villains we just didn't see. Well, so, yeah. um, and another thing too, is that they teased up this movie um, or not teased up this movie, but like in this movie that I feel like they teased up for um, continuing the story of Peach's background, you know, mm-hmm. she just showed up there one day and she doesn't know anything else um, before that. So, you would think they're going to, you know, resolve that. Um, at yeah. The yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy to see a fa- such a family focused movie, like have me so excited and just be like, man, this is going to be something to look forward to for the next 
probably at least 10 years with what they're going to do with this because it's just a no brainer. They did such a good job with this. Oh, hundred um, percent. And, and I'm glad they finally did it. Cause you know, Nintendo is Nintendo and they'll be like, no, we don't want to do it after that disaster in 93, I think it was whatever. And mm-hmm. um, yeah. I think finally they just convinced them like, no, this is huge. And then with the opening of the Mario parks, um, yep. it ties in awesome because it makes me want to go to the park even more so and after seeing this movie to like physically live in that mushroom kingdom for uh, you know a few hours. Oh yeah. I want to go mm-hmm. to that. Yeah. Well yeah, hopefully we'll be there ne- hopefully we'll be there next summer. Yeah. Yeah. That would be nice. That'd be fun. Um but uh what else uh, what was any like big negatives that you guys had on the movie? Like something that you're like shit, you know, like really wish I would have done something different with that. Well, you know, I, I briefly perused some of the reviewers, you know, like the Rotten Tomato scores. And some people are like, you know, there's like no story to this movie. And I'm like, well, there's Why enough story ever- here. Like, you don't need to, ha- like, we all know the character. Like, we don't need to know Bowser's background in this. They just let us know that Princess Peach is there. They just basically gave us a tease of like, hey, here's where she came from. Yeah. She doesn't know why she's there or how she's there. So, like, I think they did a good job with all that. And then I did too. They left everything out. Like, there's, I mean, as a fan of Mario games, it felt like I was playing a video game that I was watching. The story was good. The action was good. It was a lot of fun. Exactly. And, and when do Mario games ever have like some in depth story? They don't. Like, <laughs> like, games. like it's just, you got to go beat Bowser. And um, this had Mario all RPG within that, you know? And uh, mm-hmm. so I thought the story was great. That was one thing I heard that like, ah, the story is very weak and stuff. I'm like, well, it's, it's a Mario movie. Who cares? It's still going to be entertaining. I was pleasantly surprised that the story was actually pretty good. Like I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I tried to manage my expectations, but I was still pretty hyped up for this. And I yeah. don't have any major complaints. Was Donkey Kong in it too much? I mean, I, I see people saying that, but I'm like, that's where Mario started. Like, how do you, how are you going to plan on that? A big character. Like, or like, like, part of the franchise then um like why would you not want to have him in this and it wasn't in it like for the entire movies i, I don't know why people are getting hung up on that if that's a negative yeah he was in it just amount of right amount of time and the whole point of the movie is to get the kongs to help the toads the mushroom kingdom to beat bowser so you got to have Bowser yeah. Kong in it mm-hmm. for that part of, like you can't just disappear they're, they're gonna go yeah. Bowser together but, yeah there's there's some there's i mean it was just a blast i mean I can't wait to watch it again. Honestly, like I really like, Oh, I shouldn't go back to the theater for this. I'm just gonna have to wait, but it's one of those movies. I want to watch again immediately to see what I didn't catch. Yes. yes well, because visually it's so awesome. I was just like, I feel like I'm missing stuff here. Yeah. I, and those I, I, scenes and everything. Sorry, Nick, go ahead. I'd, I'd want to see my complaints would be just like, I'd want to see more Luigi. I thought, yeah. I thought the pacing was a little too fast. Like it was a, one thing after another it didn't really breathe some some sections you know and um yeah that's and, why and I, I, I wish i wish i did a little bit more with bowser that wasn't just him obsessed with peach which was which was funny but i don't know i just i don't know i was hoping to see more of like from the big be- in the beginning where he's like with the penguins you know and yeah kind of being a badass but it was kind of funny though where he's like talking about a dream wedding and stuff and all of his like minions are looking at him like he's crazy <laughs> yeah that was pretty good who did the voice yeah. of kamek i thought he was pretty good yeah i, I like kamek a lot I, I was glad he had a i've always liked kamek I, I i thought he had a he yeah. had a quite a bit to do he did uh, I, they, they had good use of him you know who um ebony ma he reminded me of ebony ma from the avengers um Infinity War and Endgame because he's the guy that comes in there and like spouts off all the shit before Thanos and I'm like oh that's this guy <laughs> yeah I got a kick at even like the delivery and performance like I feel like the voice actor is kind of imitating that type of character there so I thought that was right. great Ke- Kevin Michael Richardson who okay he was on he was he's done voice on Family Guy and Cleveland Show is just. Eight, okay. uh, animated movies mainly so okay um and then um eight, Fred, what's his, he's kind of go up uh, I, was, I was gonna oh, say go just that, that cranky kong was voiced by that uh fred uh armison yeah armison, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. From Saturday 
<laughs> you know that guy. And I thought he did a good job. Um, Cranky Kong was, <laughs> he was a funny character. I wasn't expecting, I was thought it was going to be Donkey Kong was going to be the king when they go to the jungle. Um, yeah. I did not expect that they were going to bring in the old Kongs like Cranky Kong in there and be, and he's the actual king. And and then of course, like how he, his Donkey Kong has that relationship similar to Mario and his dad. And um, I thought that was really well done. Yeah, and I I really appreciate the the nods to the '93 movie they threw in there, like seeing Mario's family starting it off in Brooklyn, and like their whole ad is like, "Hey, we're gonna say Brooklyn," and like that's a, exactly what they get to do, right? Yeah. I mean, I think like that was really, really well thought out, executed pretty well. I love seeing Bowser yeah. and them coming to the real world, and um, that battle there, it was it was fun. Um, and then. I don't know, random land. Maybe I'm jumping around too much. Sorry, but um, was the dog at the beginning? Was that from the Pets movie from Illumination? That specific dog. He, he remind me of like from the movie Pets. Yeah, he, he, he looks like that. Dog. Looks familiar. Yeah. yeah, it's not that dog, but it looked a lot like him. But I mean, same animation studio, so I'd imagine it's probably similar based on that. Yeah. But. Um, and, and then it, there was a scene that reminded me of Ghostbusters a little bit. Um, whenever they're in the I, uh, punch out, and he's like, "We got one," you know, like a the call. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We got one. I he's said, like, "Oh, that's kind of Ghostbusters almost." <laughs> I I said that to Nathan during the movie because it's like they're like their startup business, and yeah, we got one. And there there was something else they said too that I thought was a lot like Ghostbusters. Yeah. Well, and you, you, I just think about it, like all the scenes they tease Luigi's Mansion so well, you know, because they didn't go into the the big castles and all that kind of stuff, right? And that was a that's a pretty big element in the Mario games, right? The ghost castles. Yeah, um, I was expecting to see a boo, like a ghost boo, like in that castle when Luigi was going mm-hmm. in there. Yeah, and I was a little I, disappointed that that didn't happen, but then I was um, happy at the end when King Boo showed up to the wedding. I was like, okay, they got boo, and you know, well, yeah characters in there well it, it's like they didn't have the they didn't have the airships in this movie either did they or no there's i mean bowser's airship that came up was pretty cool i like the design of that but that felt more like something out of uh, bowser's fury so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah just the way that looked you know like i feel like that's the closest thing like with all the fire and stone falling down i feel like that's what influenced that but yeah the airships yeah but when you look at it you don't need to do the airships till you have the Koopalings and Bowser Jr. and all those other characters. So yeah, right. Uh, do you, think, did you like what they did with Dry Bones? With the Dry Bones kind of being like zombies and yeah, I thought that was really cool. Thing. Yeah, so Nate got a little bit scared in that scene, like covered his eyes, and I was like, okay, dude, I get it. Um, you know, because so I, I remember crazy. she got scared in, in that yeah uh, that whole Luigi Mansion feel scene and everything. She yep, was but oh, after that, oh. like after that, it was smooth sailing. So. I was surprised the shy guys were in the castle. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was a pretty good touch too for the Mario 2 stuff. And Cause, their because they're yeah, yeah they're from oh, Mario yeah. 2. They're from Mario 2, and then but they were Bowser's minions in like the original cartoon. But you uh-huh. don't see shy guys, you don't see shy guys a lot in the in the main games, like the side scroller games and stuff. Uh-uh. Yeah, not really too much. I mean, they're in obviously Mario Kart, but um yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you, you don't really see him as much. Uh, but I thought it was funny whenever he's in he he escapes all those dry bone um Koopas and then uh, the lightning you know strikes and all of a sudden behind him he's got oh, yeah. guys sitting there and I, I just yeah oh, man, that's great. Well did you notice the we get like an origin for the the blue shell of death for Mario Kart? It's like the head yeah. Koopa Troopa, basically. Well, I yeah, saw him on the, the poster. I saw him What's on the that? poster right before we went in, and I was like, who's this guy? Because, like, and somebody's like, it's a Koopa Troop. I was like, well, I know that, but he's got a blue spiky shell, you know? I didn't even think yeah. about him being, end up being the damn Mario Kart shell. Yeah. Yeah, that was that, pretty dude. funny. <clears throat> yeah, when they did the blue shell, I was like, oh, God, they, everybody hates that damn blue shell. <laughs> and then you put it in the movie, I was like, that's <laughs> Well, when you look at other characters, right? So Yoshi's missing, but Plessy is going to be like a character that could easily pop up elsewhere, right? And yeah. some of the Who? bigger Plessy, <laughs> the dinosaur, the yeah, water. like the first, oh, yeah, okay. first scene oh, of yeah. Mario sixty four. But you ride on his, you ride yeah, around yeah, on yeah. what's that? Yeah, so on his head. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. 
that you can you've got opportunity there. What was that fish monster they got eaten by though? I didn't recognize that. Was that was a eel one. from Mario Kart. That was okay. I'm pretty sure that's a eel. He was like, in one more level. What? He was in another game too. He's in a, like a either a three. I think he was in a three D game maybe. But okay, I was I just curious because I thought it was going to be well, like one of the big piranha fish. You know. Oh yeah. yeah. That's what I would have uh, expected there. And I was waiting but, for like you know the the cheap cheeps and stuff. And um, I was waiting for I was like they got they're gonna put bloopers in here, right? They gotta have a blooper. Like it's one of the most iconic, uh, at least in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, well, he's in the original, the original game. Yeah. Yeah, he's in the original game, and, and sure, you know they put him, they got him in there, and I thought that was hilarious. And he's like on Donkey Kong's face, you know, and he like peels him off and just throws him off to the side, and mm-hmm. and, uh, and yeah, that was good. Critics, they ink, you know, comes out, and I was like, ah, they, they just did and there's, right. Yeah, I had, a, I had such a good time watching it. Like, you know, walking out of there, like the kids were just so yeah. happy and had so much fun with it. It was like, oh yeah, that was awesome. Because every everything I was thinking in my mind is like, man, I hope they, like I said earlier, I hope they do this power uh, uh, power suit or whatever. And then I was thinking, oh, I haven't seen this character. I haven't. And then after I started thinking, then sure as shit, it, it shows up in the in the movie. And I was like, oh, is that, is this why I still have a smile on my face? I was like, they, they yeah. hit everything so well. And the beat of the movie was good. I feel a little fast on some things like maybe Nick said, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, you know, they, they can't make a, a movie like that, you know, two hours long, you know, for kids. Like it's, they had to yeah. make sure they got through it in an hour and a half or whatever. But well, and to me, so if you have Tubi, right, Tubi is a free app, but Tubi has like the old Mario cartoons on there for free. So, um, Nate doesn't have school like on Thursdays right now. And so, because he's in preschool, you know, so when he starts in the fall for kindergarten, he'll be all set. But so he was home with me and like we threw on some of the Mario three cartoon, um, which is hilarious because like all the Koopalings are in there, but they all have different names because they started production on the cartoon like yeah. right before. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. exactly. There's King Koopa and his Princess Toadstool, you know, back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like Peach. Um, yeah, that was that was fun. Uh, what was I gonna say? And those cartoons are so bad, but there's still some like serious entertainment value in them. I I, I binge yeah. watched all of them from all three series like two years ago, like right when I started collecting all these uh tax tax specific figures. Oh really? I need to I didn't I'm glad you said that about Tubi off the um throw it on my Roku or whatever and look it up. Look it yeah. Up. I mean, they're all there. Like you can watch the, uh, you know, like the, uh, the first series has a couple of Ghostbusters cameo, right? Elon yeah, when... Spangler or whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah, Ernie Hudson like... shows up in the, Ernie Hudson. yeah. Yeah. But I thought Ernie Hudson the... shows up in the live action one. Yeah. That's the first season <laughs> one. So like the little live action intercut shows. So, but um, any final thoughts on this before we wrap it up? Um, I don't know. For me, um, I am super happy they did such a well job. They took care of the franchise, the Illumination, um, and it was w- well worth the wait, I suppose, you know, in that sense. Um, because now that technology is where it is versus, you know, a number of years ago, mm-hmm. make this movie the way they did and the textures and the, and the vivid colors and stuff, it's probably better. They just never touch a movie since that bomb of 93 or whatever until they could do it with the technology, today's technology. So everything was awesome. I'll be, uh hell i might even buy the movie poster put downstairs in the man cave i liked it that much so well there's a there's a some great posters out there for this too like i loved them all i'm like man which one do you pick and i right and i haven't (laughs) looked at them because i didn't want spoilers i didn't want to look at the Mm -hmm. movie poster and see a character that's on the poster then then i know it's going to that character is probably going to be in the movie i wanted to be that's why I, i did watch the trailers but i didn't um like really watch them i didn't watch them over and over again i just watched it the one time because i wanted to have a little bit of a a surprise you know going into something like this because because uh, of all the easter eggs and stuff i knew was going to be coming i don't want to spoil mm-hmm. those moments uh you know from watching it live you know for the first time versus seeing it on a poster or a clip or something so and i just a couple of days before the movie came out i had to go back and rewatch the trailers before nick and i talked about this a couple of days ago and i was like pretty happy with the misguidance they put in there. Like, I feel like there's a few things they misguided you on and changed up 
and a few mm-hmm. like dialogue changes they had done, like to trick you into this trailer. So I was all pretty pleased with how they did that. The, the misdirection well, they did on some of that worked pretty well because I was thinking things are going to play out one way, but it wasn't exactly what they showed in the trailer, which is hard to do, especially in modern times where they're like, here's the best scenes of the movie in a highlight reel. And you're like, uh, well, they, they released the full commercial. I don't remember if they played it in the theater or not, but I watched that full commercial, not knowing for sure it would be in the movie. So I was kind of, disappointed that oh, i'd already seen it, it. i'm glad i didn't because I, I i see that's an example where like when i saw it tonight i was like ah they got the super mario brother uh or super mario yeah. Brothers in there i wish i well, hadn't that, seen that ahead of time well that first dropped with the super bowl that was a super bowl spot oh is that what that was yep okay now and, granted i think it's the scene seemed like it was a little bit longer in the movie but I still like kind of seeing yeah. that because it does give you the uh, yeah. the classic Italian accents and everything else. So yeah, and then they, like I said, they did a good job of how do you go from the classic Italian Mario voice that we know to Chris Pratt voicing it and Charlie Day, <laughs> right, uh, doing Luigi. And I thought they did a really good job of you know making a nod to all the fans, you know, about the Italian voice and then how they get away from not doing it the entire movie. Um, Absolutely. I don't even think I remember the Super Bowl drug because I was so <laughs> too much anxiety on that Super Bowl for me to um, mm-hmm. watch the commercials. Oh yeah. But that was a uh, yep. No. All right. Well, I think uh that's pretty much what we've got to say about this. Hopefully you enjoyed this movie as much as we did. Let us know what you thought of it in the comments. Um, please like and subscribe, join our Patreon. This is the uh glow in the dark elf. We've still got some of these available up on our Etsy page. Very nice. So if you want the Strange Glow video, Alf standing on a VHS or haunting the VHS coming through, throw that with your neck haunted Alf by collection tapes. right now. Yeah. <laughs> He's haunted by those tapes. Yeah, but appreciate you listening. Hopefully you're having a good time, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye.